hey, and thank you for clicking play. Um, I'm gonna do a video that I've been wanting to do for a while, just cause it's um, a bit different to how other people use a GoTech. And we'll have a closer look at this, but this is a GoTech drive. So if you're not familiar, you've recently come back to the Amiga, um, it's a way of emulating an actual floppy drive. Now, what most people will do with a GoTech is they will put them inside an Amiga in place of the original floppy drive, and that's one way of doing it. Other people will do it like I have done it, which is make it an external drive, and I've done that by simply putting the GoTech in the case of an original Amiga floppy disk, uh, external floppy disk drive. And, um, but when you do that, you can't boot from the GoTech because the internal drive is known as DF0 and the external drive is known as DF1. If you have another one, DF2, another one, DF3, and so on and so forth. But on the A500 specifically, you can't boot from anything but DF0, which is the internal drive. So you can mount inside your Amiga 500 a switch, which will allow you to either have DF0 as your original and then your external as DF1, or you flick the switch and it makes the external, in this case a GoTech, DF0, so you can boot from it, but it, I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying disables the internal drive until you flick the switch back again. I don't have one of those switches. I assume you have to do that with the power off. I don't, I don't know, so I'm not gonna go there. That's not my area of expertise. What's a bit different to my use, and it does confuse some people, is I don't have the switch. I simply use this as DF1. I use this in place of a real external floppy. What's inside my Amiga is the real actual floppy drive. Why do I do that? Well, because most of my games collection is functional. So I want to be able to, most of the time, I choose to, if I'm using the A500, boot from a real disk. Okay, so that's my preference. So why have a GoTech? as an external drive at all. Why does that even make sense, given most things only need one drive? So what I'm gonna look at today is using a GoTech as DF1 only, and I want to look at three things. Using it as an external drive just for storage. Using it to copy ADFs onto a floppy disk. And also, while we're doing that, we might as well also uh, look at using it to back up a floppy disk to ADF. ADF, again, if you've just come back to the Amiga scene, is basically a file format that imitates a disk. And what you have to realize about an ADF file is it isn't a file, it's a virtual disk. And once you get your head around that, it makes things a lot easier. <laughs> we'll unpack that as we go through. An ADF is not a file, it is a virtual disk. I'm mad. Right, let's boot up the Amiga and have a look. Okay, so what we're gonna have to look at uh, first is just using um, the GoTech as an external drive. So in place of an external floppy drive, which you would put additional disks in, of course, you can't boot from it. First and foremost, I have found with GoTechs, and I'm sure there's instructions out there, never unplug the USB with the Amiga on, <laughs> always make sure it's off. I did have my Amiga react rather bizarrely to me doing the opposite, so I don't think that's good practice. Um, so I'm gonna turn on the Amiga, and look, here's my GoTech. It has a disk selected, but as you can see, it can't boot from it. So I've got a disk image selected, and it can't boot from it. What I can do here is I'm gonna choose a very specific disk image, so I'm gonna choose an image here called, huh, well, that's gonna be confusing for you. The disk image is called images simply because it's got some pictures on it. I should have just called it pictures, but that's fine. Okay. Hopefully what's on that is what I think is on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna boot from my copy of Workbench here. Yes, these are PC disks. They still work in an Amiga. It's good enough for what I need, okay? I do have some new old stock double density disks, but they're being saved for special projects. And we also have, which we will play about with, some brand new PC disks as well. So there we go. Right, 
loading my copy of Workbench, which is customized with custom colors because you can do that. And that's a normal thing that you did back in the day that I certainly did back in the day and I've done it again. So we'll let Workbench boot. Farty noises. Okay, now look straight away. So the, the file on the USB drive, the disk image is called images, but in actual fact, in Amiga world, that is called dpaint, because that's what's on here. So here is 005 Agima, that's what I've named my copy of Workbench. That's the disk in the drive, okay? This is the disk in the external drive, which the file name is called images, but the actual disk is called dpaint. So I can look at the contents of that disk. Notice there's no drive noises because it's, it's the GoTek. And actually what this is, is a copy of dpaint. And I thought it had a picture I drew on it, but oh yeah, there we go. So I've got some pictures that I drew this one here. Okay. So you can use it as an ex external storage. So if I had another file on a floppy disk, for example, then, you know, maybe I could copy that across. I'm not gonna actually move any of this around because you'll, you'll all go crazy, obviously. But you know, I could copy from one disk to another. That's what I could do. So it's a really good use. Why is that a good use of an external, uh, as a GoTek as an external drive? Well, because I can create as many disks as I want. And I'm just gonna show you how I do that on my PC now. So keep it in mind, an ADF is just a disk image. It doesn't matter what's on, what's within that ADF when I create myself additional disks. All I need to do is find any ADF file, copy it in Windows like I would any other file, paste it multiple times if I want, create myself a mass of extra disks, and I can just rename them. But all that is is renaming the image so that it gives me a prompt when I'm browsing through on the GoTech as to what I might be intending to use that disk image for. It's a virtual disk, each one is a virtual disk. So what I've just shown you there is a bit like this. It's a bit like taking this physical disk and magically rubbing it and ending up with a pack of 10. That, that's essentially what I've done, which of course you can't physically do in the real world. So rather than chasing physical media to store your files that you're working on in your Amiga as an external storage solution, why not use a GoTek just as DF1? And in fact, I've been doing that in the work I've been doing in Shoot 'em Up Construction Kit, making a game um, to give away to Rich, who won my competition last year. I am uh, basically selecting a certain disk image on my GoTek. I am then in Shoot 'em Up Construction Kit, selecting DF1 as the storage drive, and that's where I'm saving the work to. Now, another benefit of that is this. So every time I do a heap of work on that image, um, on that game in Shoot 'em Up Construction Kit, I turn power off my A500, I put the USB stick in my PC, and I copy that ADF across into my OneDrive so that it is backed up. What a fantastic way to make sure I don't lose all those hours of work. So there we go. It really doesn't get any more complicated than that. And just to again highlight, look, well, this is, it's called Images on the GoTech. If I rename this, and let's call it pants. Okay, that's renamed the disk here, but the file is still called images because the, they're not the same. The file, the ADF file is a virtual disk and the image, the information that's in that is completely separated from that file name. Better rename that back. You'll also notice here that that's currently deep paint. If I change the disk image here to, let's go to, I've got one called Scramble here. That's gonna change the disk within Workbench. It's as if I've pulled out one disk and put in another, and now that says Scramble. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna boot XCopy, but for, for, before we do that, I just wanna do a proof of concept here. So let's just demonstrate. This is a brand new, new old stock disc that I've literally just pulled out of the box. I'm going to put it in the drive and you will see There is nothing on the disc. That disc is blank. Okay, and that's what I'm expecting. So let's put that there. On the GoTech, I'm gonna make sure scramble is selected, very important. And I'm gonna boot from Xcopy, which is of course not a legitimate version of Xcopy. So Scramble is actually a homebrew game, by the way, that I've been playing about with as part of a high school challenge that's going on at the moment. So we're in next copy, some memories flooding back to a lot of you. So the important thing here is to get your head around. The internal drive is DF0, zero, zero. And the GoTech as an external drive is drive DF1 or drive one here. Here's your source drive. So wherever the lights are at the top here, that's the drive you're reading from. And the ones under target drive are the drive you're writing to. So let's eject X copy. Okay. Let's put in our blank disc, which is there. So we are reading from DF1. So we need to change this. So our source drive is drive one. So we move the light to drive one. Our source drive is drive one. We are writing to drive zero. Okay. With that done, I always add all the blocks. Let's start. So we can't boot from this game from the GoTech because it's only an external driver's DF1. Therefore, I'm writing it to a real floppy disk, which is that blank floppy disk we just pulled out of the box. And as soon as that's done, I'm gonna reboot the Amiga and it should boot up into Scramble. I say it should, I've not tried this. <laughs> I mean, I've done this with another game, but I've not actually done it with, um, with Scramble yet. Should work fine. I have played this in emulation. It's very good, but I actually found that it worked better on, e on, a on my A1200, uh, in under emulation, sorry, not on, not on my 1200, on an A1200 setup in emulation, on an uh, A500 setup, there was some gla graphic glitching, so I'm not sure what the problem was there. So for all I know, this, this actually won't boot. I don't know. Didn't think of that. I should have chosen another game or program. Right, looks like there was nothing on those extra blocks. Okay, so with Scramble still in this drive, so it's now nothing to do with the GoTech, I'm going to reboot. In fact, we'll prove that. We'll eject that from the disk drive. Let's reboot the Amiga. Doesn't boot. Let's put the disc in. Don't like the way these discs sound actually. They're brand new. It's now booting because I've duplicated that ADF onto a physical disc. It is overwritten the, the binary uh, on that disc. So I'll link in the description. It doesn't, it doesn't like it. I think that's actually the disc or the fact that it, it actually doesn't like it. Oh, there we go. It's actually worked. It, it, it has actually worked. So it, this, is a, this is a homebrew, so there might still be some issues. Um, all right. This is actually a very good port of Scramble, by the way. 
RC under original, under emulation on the A500, this was giving me graphic glitches. But actually, this is working absolutely fine on the real hardware. Goes to show you, you can't always trust emulation. But we're not here to play scramble, so let's get on with it. What I'm going to do this time on the GoTech, I'm going to select, I have some empty disks that are just marked empty. So I'm going to find one of those. Empty. Okay, I've just got a disk called empty here. So I'm going to use that. Right, so we don't want X copy on there. We will copy onto my empty disk, which may or may not be empty. It essentially, it's a disk image. It's a virtual disk, may have something on it that I'm going to overwrite, may not. The fact that it's actually called empty makes no difference whatsoever. And I am going to copy onto that. Let's do this. Amiga test kit. Okay, so I'm going to put Amiga test kit in the physical drive. So I've got Amiga test kit, physical drive. I'm copying from DF0 onto my empty DF1. Right, so my source disk is DF zero, which is this drive. My target drive is DF1, which is the GoTech. So that's all good. Again, I'm just going to add the extra blocks just in case. I'm going to click start. So what that's doing, keep it in mind, imagine there is a physical disk in here with just the word empty written on a label. The label bears no reference to what's actually on the disk. It doesn't matter, it's going to be completely overwritten. Just like we used to overwrite magazine disks back in the day, that's what's happening here. This is going to completely overwrite the contents, if there are any, of this disk. But I need to know that it's called empty, because when I look at it on the PC, it's probably a good idea to rename it. And the trick, she is done. So first of all, let's see what empty should actually contain by rebooting that with that disk in the drive. So it should run Amiga test kit on the A500 from the, from the physical disk. So just to see what it actually looks like, that's what Amiga test kit looks like when you boot it in a real A500. So in theory, when I boot an emulated A500 on my PC, that's what I should get as well. So let's have a look at that now. And so why would you do that? Why would you copy from a physical disk to an ADF? Well, A, for exactly that scenario I've just given you, maybe I don't have that in ADF format and I want to play about an emulation, or maybe it's like I said, just for backup purposes like I'm doing with that game for Richard in Shoot 'em Up Construction Kit, being able to make multiple copies of that now virtual disk and back them up in the cloud or whatever. Fantastic way to go. All right, so there you go. I hope that made some sense to you. I hope that was useful to someone out there and I'll see you in the next video.